Good morning, folks. It's uh, just after 4 a.m. It's Tuesday. Um, we are... Well, we've got an ETA of about 11.30, which is an hour and a half past what uh, my dispatch documents say are our ETA. It's only an hour past what the uh, broker's tracker says the appointment time is. Uh, and I'm going to count on the fact that a lot of brokers will schedule your appointment for an hour after what they tell you they've scheduled their appointment for. If that's the case, then we're right on time. <laughs> uh, I hope that's true because we're going to a Costco distribution center, um, which, uh, will probably be pretty busy and they're probably pretty strict uh, but at the same time big distribution centers uh, they're they're pretty easy to get in and out of they may just find the company but there wasn't anything I could do about it it's not like I didn't haul ass as soon as I could and it's not like I wasted any time between then and now so yeah I think we're just running them behind because the shipper was so disorganized so I'm gonna go inside real quick and get some supplies I don't know what I need I don't really need anything I've got food on the truck since I went to Walmart over the weekend um, but uh, my boots are still wet from yesterday I, they just just got soaked all the way through yesterday um, but uh, I'm gonna take in the trash as well and uh, come back and I guess get started on the free trip. All right, see you soon. folks we uh, are definitely running behind I've talked to both my dispatcher and the broker uh, the appointments at 1030 we're not and we're 100 miles away and it's 930 no way we're getting there at 1030 um, now both trucker path and Google Maps are telling me to get off here at about 35 miles to get off the interstate and not go up, um, continue on 81 up to 70 and then take 70 across. Google is saying that the reason for that is that there's an accident on 81 that's adding something, it, 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 it basically adds 30 minutes to the trip time. So they're both in agreement that I need to not go all the way up to 70. What has me taking a moment to think about it is, I don't know if y'all can see off to the east there. <laughs> There's some ugly looking clouds in the sky. I've already seen some snow on the side of the roads. Um, all the hills are snow covered. There's been some weather reports indicating that it's going to get a little bit... Uh, sketchy but uh, the, the, the 
roads the trucker path wants me to take looks like they're U.S. Highway. So, let's cross our fingers. Hopefully the weather holds out just a little while longer or it's not as bad as it kind of looks. And uh, we're able to make good time. It's 11.30. Uh, actually, now it's about 11.50, but we've been here for a few minutes. Uh, we are next in line for our dock, so it shouldn't take, well, who knows how long it'll take. I don't know how long the guys in there has been in there, but we're queued up for the next, <laughs> for, for, for our dock. Um, and we've all checked in, everything's, you know, moving forward. Um, so I'm just going to take this event and take advantage of this time and uh, eat lunch. I've got a nice New York strip steak on the grill, and that's the way to that's the way to cook on the road. <laughs> if you ask me, nothing better than a steak sitting in your truck. That right there, my friends, is a meal. <laughs> now theoretically, I've got. Uh, baked potatoes and stuff I can make up as well to accompany it. Um, I've also got some soup in the fridge and I, probably, uh, and I might eat some of that up if I'm still hungry after I ate the steak but for the moment I'm not really all that hungry so I think I'm going to just eat the steak and we'll see if I want something else when I'm done. Alrighty folks we are unloaded. Time to head back to the guard shack and get our paperwork. Took them. It's only uh, 1.30, so I guess, let's see, we got here, what, 11.30? Two hours. That's not terrible, especially considering there was another truck in front of us. We were an hour late. So, uh, yeah, doesn't seem to have been a major issue. like our dispatcher has a load for us but he's still getting it uh, completely booked but at least we know where we're going so I can start heading that direction going to Hyattsville Maryland
something with paperwork. Or y'all can see the place is a little bit disorganized security guard like where's your paperwork well I'm picking up I don't have any paperwork makes a phone call all right go go park over there by the fire hydrant and go inside they want to talk to you well, okay <laughs> but inside the check-in process was a little more straightforward <laughs> i'm not a fan of this general area we are a little too close to dc for my taste I was talking to my daughter on the phone earlier i was like i'm going the most icely you know you will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy we must be cautious which I think just about sums up Washington DC I don't think there is a more evil corrupt place in all of America Go ahead and slide the tandems. Then Washington, D.C. And we are entirely too close to D.C. for my tastes. I break out in the hives every time I'm in the vicinity. <laughs> One of the reasons I don't like going down I-95. There's other reasons, but that's one of them. than it needed to be. <laughs> I generally am not quite so abusive. But for whatever reason this truck's been a little herky-jerky lately.
so I've uh, reserved us a spot at Flying J about 80 miles north of here. Uh, should be far enough outside of the city that uh, we won't have too much trouble getting in or out. Uh, Truck Path has pretty decent reviews about it. Uh, I mean, anything on I-95 between here and New York is going to be just eh. um, But we don't really have a choice this time. We're heading north to uh, Linden, New Jersey. Uh, with a load of, in case you couldn't tell, Canada Dry. Um, I guess it's Canada Dry. It's 12 pallets of something. <laughs> um, but uh, I almost missed the place. Well, I did miss the place coming in. It was on the right-hand side. There was a Canada, dr Canada Dry truck on its, on its way out. But he was, it was a very small entrance, and he was using all of it, and he was blocking all the signage. And I was like, well, there's no way that's the entrance, because it's just so tiny. It was like a freaking, you know, cars coming out type parking lot entrance. Um, and so I missed it, and then I made the, and when I realized I missed it, I made the immediate first right. Which wound me, up, wound me up back out on the highway. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get back. Took me quite a little, quite a way, while. Um, but uh, I got it all sorted out. It took, almost didn't make it though. Apparently they stopped receiving at three, or stopped uh, receiving trucks at three. But their guard was like, "What you doing here?" Maybe he's just not used to working with trucks that aren't branded, or I don't know. It was just it just seemed like he wasn't sure why I was here. <laughs> um, but uh, whatever, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, we're being loaded now. I don't think it's going to take them too much longer. We're only getting 12 pallets supposedly, um, and then we will uh, get the hell out of here and get as far away from here as we can before the traffic gets get, gets bad uh, hopefully we will uh, be out of here soon it's 3.30 now uh, I, looks like we're done be right back alright we have our paperwork let's get pulled forward so we can slide the tandems Fairly light load. I think it was 25,000 pounds, something like that. Maybe not even that much. What was the number I saw? Yeah, 25,000. So we're just gonna slide the tandems all the way forward, and we'll be fine.
Alrighty, we are here. We have a reserve spot, so let's find the reserve lot. sometimes oh come on flat better what are you doing if they are at the back I want to come in at, from the other side so let's go down this way see if we can spot them there's plenty of spots in here still but I already paid for a reserve spot might as well use it find them. <laughs> well, what do you think? Should we, uh, no, because it's sloped the wrong way. Let's do this. Swing this way. I was thinking about nosing in there, but uh, then we would have been sloped with my feet above my head and I don't like sleeping that way. Well, at least now we know where they're at. spots here at the back. Lots of them. Easy in, easy out spots too. I'm gonna go up there next to that flat better. I have not been to this particular I think we're at a flying J. Huh. Okay, we're on a slope here that's the wrong way. So let's go back down to the other end where the slope was the right way. It'd be nice if they were all just, you know, flat. 
but uh, I guess that's too much for some people to ask. Oh, it's a reefer. I'm picky about parking. If I can be, I'm picky. I'm not going to park right next to the reefer because I value my sleep. And I can't tell whether or not he's got it on. Last time we slept next to a reefer, it was just noisy all night long. And I had to put earplugs in. Now, there's three ways that a, a reefer can be set up. It can either be off, which is ideal for me, <laughs> or it can be in start-stop, meaning it comes on and off and on and off and on and off again all night long and makes a huge racket every time it starts up startles everybody next to it or it can be in continuous mode continuous mode is not bad continuous mode basically if you're not a reefer driver means that it just runs non-stop and as long as the motor is properly maintained bump this block there we go as long as the motor on the reefer is properly maintained it's not the worst thing in the world to sleep next to one because it's pretty much just white noise just like the sound of a, a truck engine running constantly um, but if it's not properly maintained it's kind of annoying because it's just noisy all right, well, we're here. We're parked. I'm going to take a minute because it's been a stressful day for some reason. I don't really know why it's been a stressful day. It's just this whole... Well, I do know why. Because we were late. We were running behind, and we knew we were running behind from the very moment we got up this morning. And that's coming off of a relatively stressful afternoon yesterday. <laughs> so we didn't get a full, well, we got a full night's sleep, but we didn't get a great night's sleep. Woke up early and in a rush. And we're in a rush for seven hours straight driving. I didn't stop even once, not even to go to the bathroom, and uh, got delivered, and then immediately got sent into the Devil's Playground, D.C. area, um, which I don't like being in that area. Actually, I wouldn't call it the Devil's Playground because D.C. is just so... Uh, Washington and the political scene, they're just so evil. I don't even think the Devil visits D.C. Um, so, yeah, it always causes me stress anxiety driving around that area really anywhere on i-95 um is stressful for me so i'm gonna take a minute i'm gonna breathe i'm gonna decompress and then i'm gonna go inside and get a shower
Okay, I'm gonna go take a shower. See y'all in a little while.